This is the news, reported by Chet Huntley and David Brinkley. Apollo 11 at this hour is more than three quarters of the way to the moon with all its several thousand parts still working flawlessly. The mission is so near perfect thus far that Houston Control permitted the three-man crew to sleep in this morning. Meanwhile, following an inquiry by astronaut Frank Borman, the Soviet Union reassured him and NASA that the Russian Luna 15, now in moon orbit, will in no way interfere with Apollo 11. But the Soviets still cast no light on the purpose of the Luna 15 mission. The White House announced that President Nixon will talk briefly with astronauts Armstrong and Aldrin while they're walking on the moon's surface. At 11.22 this evening, Eastern Time, Apollo 11 will coast into the gravitational pull of the moon and begin to pick up speed. The most important exercise today for the Apollo crew was a checkout of the LEM, or moon landing craft. Crewman Armstrong and Aldrin wriggled through the connecting tunnel and found its systems in order. This is a videotape replay of a transmission from Apollo 11 relayed to NBC News a short while ago. Astronauts Aldrin and Armstrong have taken the television camera with them into the moon landing craft as they converse with Houston Control. That is considering the amount of light up in there. Roger, we're about to open our hatch now. Right. same guy that when you open up the door, well, he's waiting there for you and he turns the lights on. How about that? It's like the refrigerator. That conversation between Charlie Duke and uh, Mike Collins referring to the automatic light that comes on in the uh, lamp when the hatch is opened. I think now I see the uh, utility light still in the storage thing. Hey, that's a great shot right there. We see you in there. I guess that's uh, Neil and Mike. Better be, anyway. the camera into the limb with him, uh, showing us uh, Neil Armstrong and Mike Collins back in the CSM. 11 Houston, that's a really a beautiful shot. Moment, just a moment ago, we had a good shot of uh, your police bus and the two helmet storage bags. And now behind your uh, left shoulder bus, we have the Dusky the and the ACA. We're not quite sure who's holding the camera at this point. Uh, apparently, it's uh, drifting freely inside the cabin. attached to some convenient point uh, within the lamp cabin. Apollo 11 astronauts are now more than three quarters of the distance to the moon, and they have been assured that when they get there, Luna 15, the unmanned Russian space rocket, will not get in their way. The Russians today sent a cable to astronaut Frank Borman and told him that Luna 15, now in orbit around the moon, will not intersect the planned orbit of Apollo 11. 
This extraordinary message was in response to two telephone calls last night from Borman to Soviet space officials. In their cable, the Russians did not tell Borman anything else about the mission of Luna 15, and it is still not known whether the Soviets will attempt to land their machines, scoop up some lunar rocks, and return to Earth before Apollo 11. U.S. space officials tend to doubt it. Apollo 11 has beamed back another television show from deep space. For a report, here is ABC science editor Jules Bergman. Apollo 11 is now four-fifths of the way to the moon, and at this point is loafing along at a mere 2,100 miles an hour. Later tonight, when it falls into the moon's gravitational sphere, its speed will begin to pick up. A short time ago, the first checkout of the LEM began, a critical phase of the flight, to see how the fragile craft had withstood the strain of launch. First Buzz Aldrin, then Neil Armstrong, crawled through the tunnel that connects the command module, Columbia, with the lunar module. And they showed it all to us on live television. Here's the way the picture looked. Uh, that same guy that when you open up the door, why he's waiting there for you and he turns the lights on. How about that? It's like the refrigerator. Uh... Now, let me show you a few looking the other way. Right. Hey, that's a great shot right there. We see you in there. I guess that's uh, Neil and Mike. Better be, anyway. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take the way it was the, uh, as they turned on the live TV camera and Aldrin and Armstrong crawled through the tunnel linking Columbia, the command module, with Eagle, the lunar module. Everything looked just perfect inside Eagle. The instruments in good condition, the spacecraft itself in good condition. The nearest thing to any problem they could find was a lot of dust that seemed to be floating around on the air and Aldrin said he was having a little trouble choking on the dust occasionally. They busily occupied themselves checking out the radio, the communications gear, the instruments, in an elaborate engineering checkout that lasted with uh, more than an hour on live television, showing their instruments to Apollo Control back on the ground in Houston. And from all signs, everything went just perfectly. Their checkout of the instrument system is still continuing. Later, later tomorrow, they crawl back into the lunar module to check it out still again. The next critical hurdle in the flight comes tomorrow afternoon, just after 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, when they do that big lunar orbit insertion burn using Apollo's onboard spacecraft propulsion system engine. A big burn behind the moon that will lower their orbit, a braking burn, a retrograde burn, that will drop Apollo 11 into a 60 by 170 nautical mile orbit around the moon. It's the first big step that heads them toward their landing on the moon uh, Sunday afternoon if all goes well. That's the way it goes now with Apollo 11, everything going along smoothly. This is Jules Bergman at ABC Space Headquarters. Last night, it was widely reported that Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin might actually step on the surface of the moon some four hours ahead of schedule, late Sunday night, rather than early Monday morning. However, Chris Kraft, the director of flight operations, stated very emphatically today that the plan now, as of now anyway, is to follow the original schedule. That means the first footstep on the moon should take place at 2.19 Eastern Time, Monday morning. Howard and I will be back with more news in a moment. By Playtex. The space agency once offered me a chance to broadcast via satellite to outer space, but said my message could be no more than 50 words. I told them I could keep it to one word, help. What will Neil Armstrong say on the moon? Frank has a comment. Uh, not long ago, a high-ranking official in Washington, tired of being prejudged, told a group of his critics, watch what we do rather than what we say. Our actions, he said, will speak louder than our words. <clears throat> this seems a curious philosophy for government leaders because it uh, almost invites the citizen to consider them liars or at best deceptive. But I think it is a very good philosophy for astronauts who have a great many important and vital things to do and who will be judged finally not by what they say but by what they do. It is also true that they will survive or perish by their actions, not their words. No amount of spacesuit eloquence will help them get back to Earth next week. So I think we may be putting too much stress on the importance of those first words from the moon. 
If Neil Armstrong is merely able to tell us he is there and is all right, that will be the most welcome and the most historic words he can utter. Come to think of it, we ought to be grateful that our first man on the moon is a low-key type given to understatement rather than uh, exaggeration. Suppose the first words were something like, now let me be very clear about this. Or suppose Hubert Humphrey were the first to speak from the moon. There'd be no time for him to pick up any rocks. I grant you, Everett Dirksen might be a smash declaiming on the sea of tranquility and the ocean of storms. And Nelson Rockefeller would probably be so delighted not to see any demonstrators there that he might say something worth remembering. Lyndon Johnson would be interesting, but of course he can speak only to CBS. Now, I think we're much better off with Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on the moon. Neither, so far as I know, has ever said anything irrelevant. And in public life today, that is truly historic. Howie? <laughs> Thank you, Frank. That's tonight's news.